that you, YouTube? Oh, it's good to see you back. <laughs> there was a bit of a gap between uh, uh, the last video and this one. This is episode 9. I've got some footage I've sort of uh, um, never got to use, and it's most of this um, episode. But you know, first of all, I'd like to thank the people that have contacted me and uh, in my absence and um, showed some concern. That's uh, that's sort of special to, uh, you know, to to me. So thanks very much for that, all those people. So just to really bring you up to speed on on what what happened was you know the, from the middle of last year, um, we were talking about moving down here to northeast Victoria in Chilton, um, and then sort of this came to that and. Uh, we just decided to, to do it, so I came down yeah, first. It's just beautiful. We found this little 2,000 square meter block, and I bought that. And that was in sort of, we got, got we got that in um, you know mid December. I got that all organised um, and living in the truck all the time. Uh, and then I went to pick my wife up in March, um, and uh, we started driving down. And as you know, we're in living in very strange times at the moment. The world's sort of been turned upside down and given a good shake um, so it all happened while we were driving down trying to have a sort of a bit of a, a road trip holiday sort of thing for a couple of weeks and we kept getting these messages about um, on the radio about this new China virus that was was out there and uh, we just continued on our way but as we got further and further you know it's we, we uh, it started to get a bit more serious and uh, it's quite unbelievable what they were saying you know <laughs> And as we went further down, we were down on the Murray at um, just near Murray Bridge, uh, staying in a caravan park there right on the river's edge. And we decided to have a couple of days there because it was so gorgeous, heaps of bird life. And then I started thinking, well, we should just make a run for it, shouldn't we? We shouldn't be hanging around here. And as it, as it was, you know, we uh, that, that day we sort of uh, drove most of the day to get up to the um, Victorian border on the Mallee Highway. And uh, country in Victoria were a bit happier. But, um, uh, we got here and we've been living in the truck. You may have seen the, the little black cottage uh, cabin, shack, whatever you like to call it, that was in the first shot. We now I've had that half built uh, when I left in, in, uh, in uh, early March and we've now completed that. It was a site shed, now it's uh, our stay at home, our hashtag stay at home uh, uh, abode. Um, of course it's got no uh, council approvals because you can't afford to wait a year for a silly council to do their work in a time like this. We just went ahead and and, and built it and got it done. It's on a steel sled, it sits on the ground, it can be moved at any time and it's quite comfy. Um, so that's where we're living now. And again I really thank a lot of thanks for the people that have contacted me and uh, and um, I've got quite a few videos. I'm not on in a truck but stuff I've done in the past and uh, and you know it's really you know for someone who's not very social, it's really quite uh, interesting, people contacting me. And, uh, so it means a lot when people get back to me, and I hope the videos I make are sort of uh, uh, give people you know, help and <laughs> I don't know what, you know, with what their little projects. Anyway, that's enough for now. Watch the video, if you will, and uh, the next... So what I've uh, tried to do with these water tanks is to sort of, a, I guess you call it a composite construction method uh, to keep with the composites of the whole thing, is uh, 
I've got, I have to have a structural frame to hold the, the tank with. I use a 2 mil aluminium tank and TIG weld the whole thing up. Or I fill a, f a fiberglass tank in which I've got to... Um, uh, both ways I've got to support them some way so this way I'm sort of composite I've, I've built the big thick uh, six, 6 mil 50 by 50 equal angle frame around and I'm making the um, uh, fiberglass tank within that out of flat sheets which I then glue and tape together um, and so I've got a very rigid structure um, and uh, I can hang it from underneath the, the, the tray of the truck what I'm doing is just uh, coming up the um, chop strand uh, glass to go into the, to be laid down here and I'll lay up another, another sheet of, um, of the, the fiber glass. It's, um, it's quite a good, you know, you compare it to plywood or steel. Um, so what I'm making here is the uh, the, um, these are the bases of the tank, so the, the base of the tank will be in there is one of the, the stone, um, aluminium frames for the tank and this piece will cut out and glued in the side on the bottom. These are just little stiffening pieces to, you know, it's only um, I think it's 600 millimetres high so the pressure at the bottom of the tank isn't, isn't that much but nevertheless, except the moment it's a bit, a bit floppy but um, it should be about four mil, four layers of um, 350 gram, 450 gram there, four layers of 450 gram, that's a piece there. Um, I forget what this is from. But, you know, it's super rigid, super hard, super tough, you know, much stronger than a piece of aluminium, former piece of aluminium, um, more like a piece of steel. I watch a few um, uh, making videos on the old YouTube uh, myself. Um, spend a lot of time looking at that sort of stuff. It's always blokes uh, by themselves and shit talking to the cameras while they're doing things, isn't it? So, very few women, it's all those guys who uh, have this urge to, to make my stuff. There was a time that I remember my father. Who was the maker of stuff in the house just to look at me? Um, it was a little bit different back then because uh, you, know, you could go down to local hardware store and buy your stuff and make it and have it you know, substantially cheaper than the one you'd buy from the shop. Or, you know, I could have bought all from bloody China at <laughs> half the price. The, the resin itself and the e glass is all Chinese made, imported by other people into Australia. And just the way it is. It's going to be very interesting in the years to come because I think China is uh, now running into a bit of trouble. Um, their wages are going up. They're not the. Uh, they're doing a whole lot of stuff that the rest of the world isn't too happy about. Um, Trump's putting trade sanctions on them or tariffs on them. So um, we'll see what happens. And hopefully, it'll bring a bit of manufacturing back into Australia where people like me can make things and get paid to make things. So these are the uh, the last photos I have of um, the build in Darwin. Uh, I've lost a phone and lost a bit of gear. Anyway, um, this shows you how I finish off the those two water tanks with the uh, with gel coat inside, that aluminium frame. Um, painted them up. They look quite good and they're working well. They're working really well. The um, one of these boxes here, that front box is the generator box. Uh, that's not working so well. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to talk about the electronics in the next video, I think, because I've put in now two Victron off-grid systems, one in the truck and one in this cabin, so I'm sort of learning from, uh, from what I'm doing. So the, uh, I've made lots of mistakes, and you can learn from those mistakes. So uh, tune in to the next video. It should be very long. I'll put that together fairly quickly. Um, and thanks for watching right to the end.